My brother. Yes, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right into this. How do we make sure that the relationships, new and old, that we have remain strong and that they are also relationships that, um, you know, are necessary for us as well, human beings? Thank you very much for the introduction and the background information you're, you're giving. Welcome. I think your points are clear. Um, they are a worry given the fact that Facebook and social media in general have changed the definition of who a friend is. Right. So somebody sends you a request, you <laughs> grant, and they become your friend. Just like that. Hitherto, that wasn't the case. Mm. People would go through a process, and they had uh, structured ways of forming friendships, mm. or sustaining friendships, or initiating friendships, or keeping friendships. Mm. So. For individuals now, it's become too easy uh, for you to get into another person's space. And that is why I think your subject of the emphasis on healthier and meaningful makes a world of difference. Mm -hmm. Because not all engagements that you get into would be classified as healthier, mm -hmm. nor meaningful. meaningful. So it's good we are discussing it this way so that others would be mindful when they are taking the steps to either form or accept a proposition for friendship or to continue or discontinue a friendship right. of any sort. Right, right. So let's talk about what it means to have a healthy relationship. All right. Okay. Um, typically in a healthy relationship, individuals have some kind of responsibility towards one another. Okay. And towards the relationship okay. itself. You so see it's that? not opportunistic. No, it's not it's opportunistic. It's symbiotic. Yeah, it's biotic, yes. Mm -hmm. It's very much a shared experience. Okay. It's not a dependency model where one person looks at you as a beneficiary mm -hmm. and they being a benefactor. That's not what it is. The moment that goes into the relationship, it compromises its health. Okay. And it becomes dependent on one to make it work mm -hmm. and not the two of us making it work. <laughs> And so I would look at um, a phenomenon as trust, okay. as a critical one. And here the trust I'm using is an acronym All right. that will give us some indicators, not exclusive though, but at least if you have these indicators, it gives you an idea whether or not you are in a healthy relationship or a relationship worth its sort. Okay. Serious. This is sustainable. This is something that you can commit to. Otherwise, then what are you doing? Mm. So the first thing in the trust model, which I propose, is truthfulness. Truthfulness. So that's the first T. Very important. Individuals need to be truthful to themselves and to the things they do or say. Mm. If you know you are not ready to make certain commitments, don't. Because you're not testing the pulse of people. Right. You're not playing on the keyboards of individuals' emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, the other element is respect. Respect. Why do you form a relationship or friendship with another you can't respect? It's a pain to see that people get into relationships where there is no respect. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're demeaned and you are robbed of your value as a person. Uh, there used to be a preacher on city uh, radio, and uh, he would always say that in his church, it's a place where you are valued and not numbered. Mm, mm. Are you you're, being, not, you're not just a number. Yeah, are you just mm. a, a status enhancer? <laughs> are you somebody to represent something or to warm a space or to fill a vacuum mm. simply because for now it's convenient for the other party to so do? And that's very important. Then the issue of understanding. Understanding. Understanding yourself as a person and willing to understand the other party. It's painful to be in a relationship or friendship where you're not understood. Absolutely. I mean, I we've been what, there. <laughs> I, I mean, how else would people wish to be in another space if it is not for understanding? Yeah. Understand your circumstance, understand your struggles, understand your story. Mm, mm. Because each one of us has a story. Yeah. And if I hear your story of you or relate with you the same kind way I am doing now, or I'll just say, ah, 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 let me find some space mm. for myself. Wahala, oh, dear, I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> no, wahala, no, wahala. <laughs> then the S in the trust is selflessness. 
selflessness. Because you see, the relationship model requires each one of us to give away something in order to be able to accommodate the other person. There's no relationship where you don't give away something. If you're not willing to let go of certain things, sometimes it's your ego. Sometimes it's a certain attitude you have. You've got to let go of that, and that makes you selfless because it's a sacrifice you are rendering in order to be able to sustain this relationship. Definitely. You know, and the other T is teachability. Teachability. An individual's willingness to learn and unlearn certain things. Because, you see, when I come into your space as a friend, there are things I would discover simply because of the privilege of getting close to you. How teachable have I positioned myself to learn new norms, new narratives, new conversational styles, new interests? Because so I know this, yeah, I'm stuck in it. This is me. I, this is me. Take me as I am. Take me as I am, which is very common when you discuss <laughs> right. the conversation around temperaments. Yeah. Because if you talk about temperaments, most of the time, you would hear one individual tell the other person in their life, who is a significant one, that this is who I am. Take me just as yeah. I am. It means that they're not ready to reform. Even when what they have heard transforms their life, they will resist the transformation. <laughs> and that doesn't help. So teachability is very important. So for me, these basic ingredients are needed in any healthy and meaningful relationship. Okay, so the acronym is TRUST. TRUST. Which in itself sums everything up, yeah, really. It is. So teachability, yeah. the first T, the, respect. The first T is... Uh, oh, it's truthfulness. Truthfulness. Yes. Truthfulness. Yes. Then respect, respect, understanding, understanding, selflessness, selflessness and then teachability, teachability yes. trust. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> and I hope our viewers and our listeners are taking notes because this is, you know, some keys that you need. Really. Yeah, These so are keys important. that you need to go through the year, especially if you're someone who's been struggling mm. with the kinds mm. of relationships mm. that you are in, that you have, and you really, really want to tackle them for the better this year. Okay, so if we have these things, swimming and clothing, our relationships, then we're likely to be having or to be dealing yeah. with healthier relationships. Yeah, you right? will You will most yeah. likely than not be forming a healthier relationship yeah. because, you see, it comes with intentionality. We are intentionally engaging each other right. and forming the trust commitment to each other and to the relationship kind that we have. For others, the relationship kind is, say, a work colleague relationship. Right. I mean, I read Steve Covey's book, The Speed of the Trust. Speed of Trust. Amazing it's book. And it book. shows you how and why, when I trust you, acceleration is not a struggle. Right. But when I can't trust you, I need to get into a mode of second guessing every action right. of yours. So that's where the walls are put up. The walls are sure. there. Can I, put, I, you know? Should I let you in? Are you going to harm me? Is exactly, this good for me or not? Exactly, yeah. because we're all driven by a sense of security. Right. So that assurance that is created is what enables trust to be formed. And where trust is absent, nobody is going to take a gamble. You know? So there's a need for each person. It could be in a brother-sister relationship. Sibling relationships also require trust. Why would you give you a key, the key to your room to your yeah. brother or sister whom you can't trust. Very true. They may be very pilfering. Very they may very have true. kleptomania. Very true. Yeah, I mean, in fact, there are examples yeah. of siblings who will lock their wardrobes when they are going out. Exactly. They don't trust their That's exactly there what it is. There are also examples of parents who will lock their fridges yes, because they can't trust that the chicken in the stew <laughs> will remain we'll there, there by the time they <laughs> come home. They come. You know, so yeah. you're right. We yeah, can take I mean, it for granted, but yes. trust it's, it's a very yeah. important poison to get some bad typhoid. You, tr you trust the source <laughs> the of production. Nice. <laughs> you trust the person dispensing the food. Yeah. And so you buy it. And you trust the price as well. Okay. It's the source of the production. Is another is whether the person has a clean health mm -hmm. bill okay. or if the price is okay. So whatever it is, you need to trust something in order to be able to entrust yourself into another space. Very true.